Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to show you uh, a walkthrough of this two channel relay that I made that connects to Wi-Fi uh, that you can also control over Wi-Fi. As you can see, there's two different uh, outlets here. So you plug one into whatever outlet you want and then you have two outputs. Uh, I could have made one outlet and two outputs instead, but the wiring is just a little bit easier to have two separate ones. And then this also has a five volt um, barrel jack input. Now I could have integrated the power supply um, and just had literally one cable for all of it. Uh, I decided not to do that just because I didn't have much uh, else room in this box. So I'm gonna do a little tear down on this box to show you what all is inside of it. And I'm also going to walk you through some of the code that I wrote in the Arduino IDE. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so here is the teardown of the actual relay unit. This is not my finest work, I will say, but this pur the purpose of this video is to kind of show you the basic wiring diagram of everything. That way you can understand it, you can do it yourself. Um, you can point out <laughs> flaws in my uh, wiring or whatever. So um, yeah, let's continue. So I'm gonna go basically from top down, more or less of what it is. So this is the like end connections that the client devices would connect to. They go here, the grounds are connected, neutrals are connected. Um, they're connected for each pair. So there's nothing shared between these two pairs of wires. Uh, it's all isolated, more or less, I guess you could say. Um, so each of the hots then go into these solid state relays, which I can show you right here. I have some more I'm working on. So these are 40 amp um, solid state relays that inputs three that you can input 3 through 32 uh, volts of DC power into uh, to turn it on or off. So if you're not inputting, it is uh, disconnected. But if you are inputting the power, uh, these two connections are bridged, which is really cool. So the next part of that is how to control these. And as you'll see when I walk through the code, uh, I actually have a mechanical relay in here. I don't actually I do have another one of these. Um, this is, I think, just like a 10 amp relay. If I can focus this here. This is just a 10 amp relay that you can input 3 volts into. Um, right there, as you can see, you can input. So there's ground input and VCC. Basically, the VCC connection will come from your uh, barrel jack input. So this jack goes into these two Wego connectors for positive and ground. Um, and so this mechanical relay then, you connect the VCC to positive, ground to ground. And then the in um, connection on this, this middle one here, is coming directly from the ESP8266 D1 Mini on a pin that is then triggered when the device boots. Now I'm going to get into that a little more when I walk through the code, but that is basically what's happening there. And then the relay is just switching the connection for ground um, on or disconnected to these solid state relays. So, so basically when this relay is off, there is a connection between ground, um, between these relays and the actual ground of the unit. Um, but when the, sol or sorry, when the mechanical relay is on, uh, that means there's no connection. So during boot, basically, uh, there will, it'll be on. So during boot, uh, there will be no connection to ground for these, meaning they cannot turn on. Uh, there still might be a positive connection, uh, like the positive five volts, but they won't be turning on because as you can see, they go into here and all of the grounds are connected for them. So it's a little more complicated that way, but I found that I get better results and more consistent boots and stuff um, like that. And these aren't taking um, too much power during boot of this device, which is also kind of nice. So you don't have to have the mechanical relay portion of this, but I've, like I said, I found that it's kind of nice to have. So finally, the next part is how to actually control the solid state relays. And those are just fed directly from the um, data pins on the ESP right into the relays. So the pins that you define in the software, which I'll show you later, uh, those literally just directly go into the positive um, terminals on these relays. So when there's power, they are on um, and these are connected. So that is basically what we got going on here. It's simple once you like actually start thinking about it, but it looks a little complicated. So if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. And 
let's go check out the code for all of this. Okay, so let's walk through the software here. I'm going to show you kind of um, just a basic run through of what this all looks like. So um, yeah, let's get started. First of all, we are including the Wi-Fi library for the 8266, as well as the web server library. Um, then we're going to define some variables here that will be used later on that you'll see. Uh, we're going to say Wi-Fi network and its password. Now, if you use this code, just change it to whatever you want. So literally just type in your Wi-Fi password, type in your SSID, you'll be good to go. Uh, these relay pins and mechanical relay pins, you don't necessarily need to change unless you obviously need to or want to. Um, but yeah, I'm just leaving those set as that. Uh, right here is the device ID. Now intentionally, now I intended to use that uh, when it sets the host name of the device. So when it joins your network, it shows up as ESP something. I would have liked it to show the device ID, which in my case is the asset tag for the barcode of the device, but I did not get that working. Uh, although I did leave that in here in case I fixed it in the future. Uh, this is the web server port uh, that you can set. I left it at 80. And I think it's probably easiest to leave it at port 80, just so you can access it over the network without typing in a port. Um, next, basically, this is the startup sequence. So it's going to set your pins all off by default on startup. Uh, it's going to connect to Wi-Fi. And as soon as it does connect to Wi-Fi, it's going to turn the mechanical relay on which the mechanical relay, the purpose of that in this whole setup is to provide a ground connection to the solid state relays that runs um, the actual power outlet. So I could have ran the actual switching and stuff over the mechanical relay, but I found that using like those cheap little five volt relays, I didn't really trust those terminals on there. And it was sometimes hard if you're pulling a lot of power for the relay to shut off. So solid state relays are a little bit better in this case. So. Um, that's why the, I'm using the mechanical relay. That turns on or off the grounding connection for those solid states. So uh, the purpose of that is that way there's a hard shutoff for all of them on startup. Um, that way they don't turn on or blink or whatever during startup. They, they just do whatever you tell them to after the device boots and connects to Wi-Fi. So this is set to high after it connects to Wi-Fi once it's ready to go. And here it's defining the listeners for the web server. Um, that basically, um, these are the directories or the paths that you can go to, uh, to control the relays. So I can show you what that looks like later on, but, um, that is the, like, three URLs you can go to on this device to control these three separate, um, functions of the device. And as you can see, we're beginning the server. Um, and next, what we're doing, um, this loop just lets it run the handlers or the, um, listeners for the web server. And yeah, so here's our three functions basically down here. The first one is for relay one. The second is for relay two. These are for the solid state relays. Basically, if you say um, in your URL path, if you say slash relay one and you do question mark and you say state equals on, it will set it to high. If you say state equals off, it'll set it to low. It's as simple as that. And same for this next one, if you change this to relay two, it'll do the same thing for that. So that is that. And if you don't say something that is valid, it'll say it's invalid just for debugging purposes. And so this is the um, last section of the code. This is the handler for the status command. So you can say slash status on the web server and it will report back to you um, in, in like a JSON format. It'll report back the statuses of the two relays. So it will say relay one. Um, yeah, it'll just format it as JSON, showing if it's true or false, meaning on or off. And that is about it for the code. It's pretty, pretty simple. Um, and just FYI, if you are trying to replicate this at all, these relay um, pin numbers do not match what they actually are on the board. You need to go online, you need to look up a board diagram for the ESP8266 uh, in order to get those correct uh, pin mappings. These are GPIO numbers, these are not pin numbers. So just keep that in mind with uh, modifying the code if you do that, or if you use the code, keep in mind these aren't your actual pins on the device. You gotta look that up, find the wiring diagram, then you'll be good to go. So that is all for this video. If you have any questions, like I said, please let me know in the comments down below. 
um, that is, yeah, that is the setup for everything. Uh, if you want a full parts list, I will probably link that in the description if I remember, but all of this stuff, pretty much you can just search it up on Amazon. You'll find it real easily. Um, the power I'm using is just some generic 5 volt 4 amp power supply from Amazon. So literally none of this is nothing special. So uh, yeah, I will also leave a link to the code in the description below if you want to check out the code for all of this and use it in Arduino IDE to upload it to your ESP8266. So thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.